are you? I'm fine. Hello, how are you, Denise? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for agreeing to do our live uh, Q and A tonight. We're absolutely thrilled. Um, My pleasure. And just uh, if anyone is watching, they are allowed to just type in their questions, all within reason, obviously, to Lucy and ask her anything they want. Uh, and we're just gonna, I suppose, just introduce you, Lucy, and how we met. I was just thinking about this today, how it's nearly 20 years ago um, when we first <laughs> sold your work in the last gallery, which is pretty amazing because it's been lovely to watch this journey of your work. And, uh, and one thing I've noticed with you is you always have a solo show every every two years. So is that one of the things you just prefer to work towards that you like to have a, a deadline or? Um, I think that it was something I felt would be good for me um, because um, for a while I didn't have shows. I think what happened was that I did, well, I suppose I've always had shows, if I can. Um, then there came a stage where I was quite productive and the work was selling quite well. And um, I think that I took my eye off the ball when it came to solo shows. And so I sort of thought I need to address this problem because sometimes you, you don't have time to collate work and hold it back because there's you know supply and demand um and so i just thought no i think it, i think i need to change this dynamic here and take control so i think i said to myself what do i want to be i want to be an artist that has solo shows i like the idea of that i like the idea of slowing things down a bit and being in more control rather than just them disappearing so quickly you can't super almost remember what the last one was you know it, it it's it's a way of i suppose controlling your your output and controlling having a little bit more say over what you put out there and how it's put together just and adding a few words to it and just making a little bit more of it so it just uh, that's what, uh, that's one thing i've yeah over the year you always remember every painting every title where it's gone which client i mean it means a lot to you where they, they go. And that's what I love about selling your work. You don't just, it's not like doing a piece and then you'll do another piece of itself. You're all about that collection of yeah. work. Yeah, I suppose in a way, they are like a diary for me. They are, yeah. they, they're, they mark various stages in my life as well as developing my me media and developing my medium. And developing the paint I use, so there's two things go to get. Well, actually, to be a painter, lots of things. There are a lot of things that you have to um, be good at, really, before it all works. It takes a long time to reach that stage. You don't get your act together for a long time. Well, <laughs> I, I didn't. You know, it takes a what? It takes so long. It really does. It's it's very time. -free. So we go through all sorts of phases and. Um, and then I think when the, if there's a chance to if there's a chance to take control as much as you can, then I would say that's a good thing for an artist to do. But it's all about team playing, getting together with a gallery that understands that, and uh, then you can move forward. I think artists, most artists, know where they want to be and what they want to do. I think. It's whether they're given a chance. What you you have such a distinctive style, like you. Everyone knows straight away that's a Lucy Doyle painting, um, and it's always been like that. When re recently you started to put up images of your your uh, sketchbooks from when you were in college, and I, I can really see even the girl. I'm just looking at the girl behind me. You can see that at such an early stage, and that's like 40 years ago. Yes, you really, you seem to know. I mean, you're saying there, you seem to know that journey that you were going to take, or. <laughs> Yes, I think I was. I think when it came to um, the 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 inner painting, the inner, the painting that I have inside me, I think probably was there way, 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 way back. It was how to get to it, um, and I I didn't sort of see it as a 
very Pacific painting, but I knew what I wanted it to feel like. And I think that just went so far back, I can't tell when that happened to me. So I was always drawing and always, always using color. I just, the journey to find the right paint and to, mm. to, to find the right materials to express what was inside me, I suppose it's been my journey. Um, and did you always know you were going to be an artist when you left college? I always knew I was going to be an artist from age three. I, it sounds really? yeah, it sounds pathetic, I know, but but oh. I just knew I knew it was it was a place that I felt right and it felt safe and it's something I could do and I I felt that I was encouraged as well to do I you know I felt I got reaction when I when I did it so I, I as a child you know you you um, respond to that hugely and also it was obviously something I, I could do from an early age so um, it just compounded it so I, it just went like a snowball effect always it was a strong thing in my life um, so I always knew I wanted to go to art college but um, when you get to art college it's just full of people like me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, um, and that's all you know, you meet your own kind. There's just masses of them all in one place. It's like, oh my god, I thought it was special. <laughs> did you love art? Or, I mean, no, did you? no, oh, okay. it to me. It was, really? I was, yes, I was uh, quite a naive, I think I was quite naive and very enthusiastic and quite a naive sort of person in a way when I was young and I thought I was going to be taught I thought I was going to be all my skill sets were going to be honed um, by these professional people that would guide guide me and 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 I would just come out of it um, very accomplished what I didn't realize was you're basically left on your own to develop your own style right from the word go they don't interfere at all in that way but at least the college I went to I, I, you know, I was in, it was a figurative based college, which was quite unusual actually at that time. Yeah. So, what, was the, what was the name of the college, Lucy? It was, um, it was Sheffield City Polytechnic, Salter Lane. Uh, it, it was one of those places that had so many labels because it had evolved from, I think, Sheffield Art College way back. And then it had been amalgamated into Sheffield City Polytechnic when I went. So that's what the grant bearing, that was the overseeing um, body that, that it was part, it was a faculty of that. Um, but it had its own premises. It was a completely different place to the main city. Um, and then it all changed its names and labels henceforth. But at the time that I went, it was Sheffield City Polytechnic, Salter Lane Art. So you knew you wanted to do figurative painting from that age. You, that's why you selected that college, was it? No, no, no. I was living there, so my so my parents moved from Ireland to Sheffield, and I was I went to school. I went to um, school in Sheffield, and okay. um, so it was a natural thing for me to do the foundation course there. Right. I was living there, so I I. Um, did the foundation course and then I looked around other colleges and realized that actually Sheffield was quite strong with its figurative base and what that was and it was a lot of abstract painting and um, sort of um, I suppose performance art was beginning to get quite strong then. Mm. Um, there was a lot happening in art colleges at the time. It was um, yeah. a changing play, a changing world. And I was very much in that flux of changing. I, I was almost old order, expecting mm. a more sort of a, um, a, a sort of a painting experience. And of course, it, it wasn't that at all. It was beginning to change. I think it changed a lot from then on as well. So I was at the la I think I got the last of a sort of life drawing experience. They had a life life models there all the time, and mm. some of the lecturers were very. Um, very into the figurative work. Maybe all the lecturers there were figurative painters. So they were, that was good to have that around you. And then they brought in, they brought in um, artists in residence and then they brought in artists to talk about their work and they were all figurative actually when I think about it. Wow. 
Yeah, no, it's lovely. And, uh, you're based down in, in Wicklow now. Um, so when did you move back then to Ireland? Was it straight after college? Yeah, or? yes, it was. I, yeah, okay. Yeah, moved straight back. away. <laughs> 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 I, haven't, I haven't got anywhere since. I know, actually, it, it's funny because we were just saying about how, how lockdown has affected everyone. And in one way, it just doesn't affect the artists, really, does it? Because you live that lifestyle. And one thing with you, I know you're, you have a studio for painting and you also have a studio for framing your own work. So you have, yeah. you never have to leave. <laughs> No, I know, and but but it is you know you choose that lifestyle, um, and so something like lockdown is massive. I mean, it is a huge psychological uh, difference, um, and the, and the worry, you know, I do, I I think it's such an immense thing. I I, I was like, my God, you know, this is incredible. How how are we going to cope with this? Um, and then I suppose it was anxious times, even though my work. It was interesting actually I planned this painting behind me I, I planned it the, the sec, almost the second week into lockdown I thought I need to do I need to actually immerse myself in painting and um, to oh, just okay. balance yeah balance all of the the stress out and so I would go into my studio and I started this big painting and of course it, you need to really concentrate when you start on a new big large painting there's a lot of people involved you really have to get your act together. It's it's a big thing to jump into. Um, so it helped hugely and I was very immersed in it. And it was interesting how I wasn't distracted, which is, which is I think, because I've been doing it for so long, painting mm -hmm. it is, you know, I go to my studio, put some music on, my brain switches, it's like a switch. You know, it's like going to sleep. You go into another state in your head and you have to train yourself to do that. I mean, I have to force, I had to force myself to do that really in the early days. You know, it's, it's not an easy state to get into where you can really concentrate on what you're doing. Of course, when you start to, yeah, when the paintings developed and the drawings in and all the, the bits are in and you're actually painting the sort of final stages, it, it's very easy to concentrate them because it's you're in the dynamic. But to, to actually start a painting off, is a very daunting task when you're faced with this blank canvas and yeah, you know, anything. And when you're when you're when you are in that space, then do you find it hard to stop painting? Do, do hours go by, or do you still stick to a very strict routine? Or no, I, I'm I'm quite fast and furious, so I, I get I get I I after about an hour, I start to physically flag and. I just get desperate to get out. You know, it's like, I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out. <laughs> <laughs> so I to, um, open the door and take a deep breath and, and maybe go and have a cup of tea or something like that. And um, yeah, yeah. yes, it's a, it's, it's a hard business. I mean, you, it's, it's lovely and it's amazing and you, and you get lost in it. And there's times like, there, nothing beats it. You go into a sort of state, it's a meditative state of, of pure harmony with what you're doing, and it is, uh, it nothing beats that feeling. So, you, you but it's not, you don't get that feeling all the time. That mm -hmm. feeling comes and goes, and um, yeah, it it change, it it is like any other thing in life. You you do have to train yourself to for discipline and then after years and years the discipline isn't such a problem but mm -hmm. still but you still for me anyway i do need to ring the changes a lot that's why i need to have i need to work at home because then i can distract myself with things that that i know and love so it's like one big cycle so everything around me is part of my subject matter the whole my whole lifestyle is mm -hmm. And yeah, I can see that from your video. Actually, your even your garden, you're surrounded by all these amazing yeah. flowers. And and it, actually, it was funny because when Becky had her first baby, you you had the baby. You started to have a baby in your painting. So I I feel like yeah, I've I've got to know the inside <laughs> of your life. Yes, I think, 
yeah i do i paint i paint feelings and um so um so, so that's why it's taken me so long to get a style because i've had to go back to basics and i did that in i tried to do that in my second year in college but it doesn't work like that because <laughs> too much time and they don't get what you're doing so you have to get your act together and do sort of performancey stuff you know you have to do that for, mm. for your degree at the end if they give you a mark for god's sake it's crazy um so as soon as i left college i thought right i was well i was terrifying i thought can i do this can i actually um can i spend a lifetime doing this it's daunting it's lonely and i uh, circumstantial the circumstances I was in, in a way, I just did it. I jumped off the edge of the precipice and I did it. I had to go back to basics, so forget everything I'd done before and start again with learning a language of paint, which is like learning the alphabet. It's like learning a new language because I wanted to paint what was inside me and what was inside my head, not, um, not something that had been done before because I'm unique individual as everyone is so i wanted something that matched the way i thought and the way i expressed myself so that took a long time to get the paint right as well so it looks like i've always done the same thing but i feel that i i had to reinvent a way of painting mm -hmm. but my, i suppose my subject matter has always stayed the same because my subject matter is is me mm. yeah there's so just a few questions here for you lucy yeah. Um what are you, what influences your work? It's probably what you just spoke about actually, your surroundings, your life, isn't it? There's nothing um where do you get your ideas from? Yeah, again, again, if you I mean I knew very early on that if you if you matched your um subject matter to the way that you thought and the way that you saw and the way that your brain looked at the world around you interpreted that into two-dimensional format then i knew that basically i would never be without subject matter because it's just connected when when i cook when i, when I mm. drink tea or when i see my daughters around a table or see the flowers in the garden or just a mood or something on the telly even it can inspire something or you know just a feel factor really so you're 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 taking ideas that aren't um, formulaic. They're not something that you can express in any other way but visually. So that's what, to me, a visual artist is, is someone that's using a visual language, which doesn't usually translate into words very well, as, as you're probably experiencing listening to me trying to answer the questions. It, it's, it's a visual. It's a visual thing. It's not... A verbal thing it doesn't come from storytelling it's not anecdotal it's about the way i see the world through my eyes and then how i interpret that using paint which is a, again another side to it which is mm -hmm. takes time as well and what, what about the patterns on just even behind you there on the on your dresses i've always imagined that you're beautiful fabrics hanging in your studio and that's where you get the is yeah. that right yeah. yes it's a mixture so I, I i i do love chintzy fabrics and always mm -hmm. have them i just i did they they're just wonderful wonderful objects and um i am inspired by them hugely so but uh, i do slightly morph and change them and um yeah so that the the fabric behind your head that would have been from a, that was probably from a, 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 a Chinese blue and white vase that I would have taken from <laughs> that one else and then changed it into. into oh, into. amazing. <laughs> and Adam uh, wants to know, how do you choose your color palette? Um, well, good question. Yeah. Yes, it's, a, it's a huge question and it's, it's a difficult <laughs> It has evolved, I think, very much evolved with me. So um, the, my, what I'm doing as a painter and a colorist is that I am stretching the boundaries of paint and paint is obviously color 
to its limits as far as I'm concerned. So I'm butting them up against other colors and I'm playing and experimenting, see how far I can go with that color before it starts to tell me that it's wrong or it's or it's so discordant in a, in a negative way. So when I say that, I mean that if one color leaches out the beautiful properties of another paint color next to it, then that is wrong, you know, that goes. So I don't know how these things, there's no formula because it's all to do with scale and the amount of blue you've got, or you can use little bits of blue and it changes the whole concept to make that blue a little bit bigger. And then the whole balance is, is altered. It's, it's that um, dynamic. It's a whole process of juxtaposing all these colors and forms. And so when it comes to choosing a color palette, I don't really know. So I, there's colors that I've got that I love and I've played with over the years. And I know what they do. Like I know that certain colors feel like shade to me or other colors will imbue the quality of sunny sunshine into a painting. So I know what they do, how I mix them. So I do have a huge range of colors. But and when I start a composition, I, I don't really lay out the colors that I'm going to use. And I was just well. about to ask you ask you that when you're when you're sketching your I should. I should. Uh, yeah, you don't have any you don't actually say right this is going to be more purples or greens you don't do that i try but i do oh. try i try and control the beasts <laughs> <laughs> but they just take over they, they literally take over and when i've done when i try and force my what i want so i want that dress to be green you know then i say well, i even say oh i'm going to call this composition the green dress or something like that and it ends up pink do you still your titles are they how important are they when you're you're finished or do you title that before you start the painting yeah i sort of get a mood and i get a feel factor and um and say an idea i can come comes into my head and i put it into my notebook sketchbook as an idea, it could be a little biro drawing or a pencil drawing or something very rough, you know, it's not it's not exact in any way. And then I'll sort of think about that and think, will that work? Will that work? And then go back to it, think about it. Sometimes the ideas happen very quick because I know they all work and they all work as a painting. Other ideas, I'm not too sure about that. Will it work? Won't it work? So some ideas I've had for years or some ideas are recurring and I do them again and again and again, like the letter, that that's a theme that I keep coming back to, maybe not so much recently, but certainly in the past I've used that, that composition of, of a female form licking an envelope or writing a letter. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that just feels right. And I'm just ex exploring that idea, probably from that Mary Cassette or Cassette. Yeah. Um, with her uh, print of the, that blue room with with that woman licking the envelope. Oh, God, it just doesn't. <laughs> oh, uh, some paintings just uh, just uh, always just, I keep referring back to them. You know, it's, I don't want to copy them. It's just the atmosphere that they give me and it's just so much joy. And, and I suppose that's why I paint because, mm. I, you know, I love looking at certain paintings I do. And I just want to have that joy in my life. And uh, how long does it take you to um, to put together a solo exhibition? Yeah, that's so. Um, as you know, Denise, I work well ahead of time. <laughs> it's amazing um, because this show that we're actually launched this week, like this was for May next year. No, um, no. I know what you're like. You're so you're so organised. I you know so I. I knew you're always that. I, I bet you're even thinking of the next exhibition already in your not head. Not quite, actually. Not quite. <laughs> I'm, beginning, I'm beginning to sort of, the Viridian has been quite interesting because, it, you know, it, it's lasted quite a long time. I, I've, I still feel I haven't quite pinned it down in my head. But, but um, yes, usually, so I, I give myself two years for, for mm -hmm. sure at the moment. It used to be a year. Um, and I do, I paint, seem to paint consistently about 20, 20, 20 to 30 paintings a year, I suppose, if you count all the small ones. Um, mm. 
so you know that's the way I've I think I'm just set in my ways that seems to be the way that I've done it up to now and I do work ahead of time but some of the paintings take a long time to yeah. dry actually as I as I know to my own cast earlier on when I moved I tried to change the one behind and quickly changed it and I thought no 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 I'll go back with this one and ended up with um, Naples yellow paint um, <laughs> it's it all over so tomorrow I'm gonna have to go back to that painting <laughs> and then that's the value in in your work is holding it back for so long and putting layers and layers and people some people don't realize that it takes so long for oils to, to fully dry some pigments not all or some of them dry almost overnight mm. and then some of them oh, it can take so long that you you assume they're dry and then you think hold on a minute that looks a bit shyer than it should and then you put your finger on it and you think Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> that little bit of um, Indian yellow has stayed wet, and it's been like three months. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it is like you do. Oh, do you always have all your paintings laid out for that show, and you work on a group of them at the same time? No, no, I'm definitely a one painter. I, I, I immerse myself in each painting. I can't work on once they're. Yeah, so I'll work. I'll work on the a painting that I'm working on. Will get my full attention, um, mm. but it does become resolved at a point. It's almost finished. Like the few things that have to be resolved aren't problematic. They are literally, literally just little tweaks here and there that I know I can do, and then there's no problem. They're not going to change the composition in any way, so I can leave it at that stage, and I often do. We'll leave it at that stage because it's basically completed. And then I'll start a new one, but not until then. I cannot work on more than, because the painting I'd be painting on would would morph into the next one and then they'd all end up looking the same. <laughs> uh, James Murphy, good evening, Lucy. Love your work. I'm lucky to have one. Your paintings are full of beautiful colours. Well, has this difficult time given you any ideas or inspiration for your future work? Um, I don't know. I'm quite slow to um, absorb things, actually. And sort of, that's, I've noticed that it's the way I work. I sort of, I take time. I react slowly to things. I think um, it's like I look quite brave, but really I'm not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think with the lockdown. Um, I think it's, ha it's had a huge impact and I think that it will, s how it will affect me, I don't know. I don't know, it's so strange. It's such a strange time to be in. But um, I, th I don't think it will affect my, my work really um, because actually my, my subject matter is, like you said, to be, to be a painter, to be, for me, I've had to create a sort of personal lockdown anyway to really um, concentrate on painting. It, whether it was my natural inclination to do it anyway, I knew that that's what I had to do. I knew it was just going to be a, a long-term serious business for me when I was a, very young and I thought, am I gonna be able to do this? You know, it really was quite daunting, especially after the four years at college, I was only too very aware of what it would take to get to the level that I wanted to get to. So lockdown in a way has been very similar to it's it's what i've done to myself anyway voluntarily yeah. believe it or not i don't, really don't travel much i don't do much i just contemplate um my surroundings my visual world around me um and interpret that into two-dimensional form with paint that's that's what i set out to do and that's what i do so i don't think lockdown being enforced in one place or or having to contemplate things or having lots of time to think about just the world around me. No, I don't think it will change my, my the way I paint at all. But I think this pandemic is obviously another thing altogether. It's serious, serious stuff. And I, I think that, um, I don't know, that might affect me in another way. I don't know. I really don't know. 
And another, Lucy, just curious myself, since you, you literally put your body and soul into each painting, but is it hard then when let that go, when you come into the gallery and you're selling it, do you find there's any painting that you would like to keep? Um, if there's a painting, no, um, no, no, there are paintings I do like, I do feel that I need to live with a little bit longer. Um, because they're giving so much interest back to me and maybe unresolved bits that, that are fascinating. Um, or there's just something about the vibration of the colours that really do it for me. But it's usually time, over time, then I then I sort of will find there was another painting that did the same. And I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that people um, love my paintings and want my paintings. That's, that's, that's the goal is to communicate. It's a visual communication. So of course, it's for me, the culmination of my work is for it to be bought by someone and, and they've them to live with it. That is, that's ideal. And then if, if I can show the work, it can be up on it in, in your gallery. And see, that's fantastic too, because people look at it. And then of course, social media, it's great because I can share it on social media. And that's amazing too, because I'm communicating what I set out to do. And that was to create a visual language um, that, that's universally understood, um, which is it's a great thing. Yeah. And the girls, the girl, like I, I often see Katrina and Becky in in your your figurative paintings i think yeah uh, you've had nick doing the gardening in one of them as well through a window yes, i can't i, I can't they're not, they're not meant to be, are they? <laughs> i i tried i tried not. painting men because uh, someone challenged me they said why don't you paint men i said well i don't know just I'm not a man, so I don't don't feel that I'm I, I, I just don't want to go there really. Not not for any other reason that it just doesn't feel connected in, in what I'm trying to say. So it's my my through my eyes. So I I wouldn't know how how that language went. I wouldn't, you know, someone else a man can do that. <laughs> but I have tried. I sort of closed my eyes and did it very, very roughly. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, yeah. I, it, 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 I didn't go back to it, so it was something okay. I explored. But um, so, so I do, I do paint, I paint the people around me. But I, I do, I mean, I do the odd sketch of them, and I, when they're there, when they're around, which they're not at the moment, um, I will always be staring at them and looking at them, and I can't keep my eyes off them. So yeah. I'm always looking at them, drinking cups of tea on the on the sofa, reading a book. Or with their children, and it's just fascinating to 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 the way they they own a chair, or the body is draped over a sofa, or or that connectivity with with someone in an interior, absorbed reading a book, or or chatting to each other. That discourse, that communication, all mm. vital and wonderful. And it's just yeah, I'm totally totally mm. absorbed with that. But I don't do portraits so uh, that all those observations obviously mm. go sink in because whenever I do a figure I I I used to work from life from a figure and I decided that um to to make the, the figure fit into my compositions they had to be from my head but otherwise I'd get lost in too much detail in um the detail of a face and it ends up the portrait very quickly I think. Do people ask you to do commissions of portraits? I no. know we were asking you to do a dog if someone wanted a dog commission. No I wouldn't have to. No, and you said figures, no. <laughs> my figures I didn't go down the portraiture line and I think it's another art form in its own right you know the figure it dominates it's it's a it's a completely different subject matter I think that um, it's it would take a lot of different skill sets that I haven't developed, and um, so um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do it because I'd feel that I, it's not my strengths, and it's, it wouldn't go anywhere. For me, it would have no legs, so it wouldn't develop to something else. I wouldn't want it to develop into anything else. So no. Yeah. 
Um, Audrey, I'm interested to know your wardrobe style as you're such a wonderful colorist. I see you are wearing a limited palette. Is this intentional? <laughs> I'm wearing one. A limited palette. <laughs> yes. Yes, I usually wear. I'm usually wearing black, actually. Um, yes, I, I know. I, I should be wearing beautiful floral dresses, and, but no, not at all. I'm usually <laughs> jeans, paint spattered jeans, and um, yeah. you've put all, all your colour goes on the canvas. The canvas. <laughs> yes, um, it's so interesting. Yes, it's. <laughs> Marie, uh, thanks for joining us again. I love the vibrancy of your work. Do you work on a number of pieces at one time? No, I, well, I said that earlier that um, yeah. I tend to work on one and then, yeah. Uh, Trudy, also, how do you keep your colours so fresh when you're putting the paint on so thickly? Whenever I try that, I just end up a mass of grey paint on the canvas. <laughs> What's your technique? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you have to keep it you have to you have to keep your, your, your knife clean or if you are in a brush you have to literally clean it off every time right yeah um do you have any preference to a fair figurative or still life or does this matter what, what, what was that again do you prefer painting figurative or still life oh which would i prefer um um, it's both it's all observed, really. So um, flowers of observed painting. Um, my still life objects are always observed. I, I bring them into the studio and paint them from life. So that's a very similar process, actually. Um, the com composing of the space. Um, again, I tend to do that always. So I'll, I'll flatten out the space then to um, obliterate um, the um, illusionistic painting. I'm not interested in that, but I'm trying to bring everything up to the frontal plane in a sort of decorative way. So, um, so. Um, Audrey wants to know, do you photograph ideas? To, um, I, my, photographs would be an aid, would be just the same as um, a little, say, and it, a little note in my sketchbook like mauve works well here or something i would use the photograph as as um, a backup maybe um just to remember um something that maybe i can't hold that information all the time so it's it's an aid it's a jolt um no more than that i would say um but it is a very useful tool for um, keeping ideas together and this, when you had the idea jogging your memories of what you were thinking of at the time so obviously you know reference material comes in a lot of photographic form and um, yeah I would, say, I would say it was a visual aid but I certainly don't I don't work from photographs no I don't. Yeah, you're, I say you have hundreds of sketchbooks. Do you or? I bring this. Well, it'll be a mixture of things, but mainly, mainly it's I try and get as much observed painting in as as I can within the composition because I think that it gives extra detail. Um, mm. it, it would be lost in any other format, even from a sketch that I would do from life. It doesn't really work for me. I've got to have that object there in front of me. Right, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, do you use drying medium with the paint to hurry up the drying process? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> 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 no, 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 it's just, just the paint. Yeah. Um, very well, yeah just the paint. Um, have you ever in your career experimented with dark colours or a dark themed painting? Yes, I, when I was very much younger, so I was at college, I um, started to work big for my third year um, degree 
final degree show. I had gone to the Great Japan exhibition in, in the Royal Academy in London, and that really bowled me over. It was amazing. So I wrapped my third year show around that. So I worked large pieces, so large bits of board, um, cradle board, and then I um, I made my own paint out of <laughs> various things, gouache and egg yolk, I think, at the time, um, because I liked the texture it, it created. And um, I worked with a lot of black, so I used um, the carbon black and yellow ochre, and then I started to introduce a few little colours. Um, I found that was a sort of good way to start to learn about colour. Doesn't, doesn't that sound strange that you reduce your palette so much to yeah. be able to work out how to how to work with red or how to work. So you've got to, each color I had to research really and work out how to make this work, how to work with color. It's difficult, yeah. color is very uh, difficult. You know, you have to train it and corral it up a bit. It, it can, it has a life of its own. It's such a strong thing. That, do you still experiment with that or do you think you just nailed it now and that's it? No, I never feel I've nailed it. Um, <laughs> all the prizes. So, um, wow. Yeah. I'm quite, I'm very confident with colour and I haven't got a problem with it, it creating surprises for me. I quite like that. When, when something really doesn't work, I learn, learn, I learn a lot from, from making this. Well, I don't even call it making mistakes. I don't know what that means. And, and I don't understand what failure means. I don't understand any of that because to learn, you have to push yourself. And to push yourself, you're going to go into areas where you're not comfortable and you feel completely out of control. Um, but I know that feeling. It seems to be part of being alive is feeling out of control. And you, you control little bits and pieces. And I think to have an open mind and to play is is a wonderful way to be able to explore something like painting because it you never know what's around the corner you learn all the time about yourself you learn about the paint you learn about the subject matter it's never ending and the and the, mm. and the, 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 the different permeabilities are, are, are huge you know you can have a a painting is finished then do you just know or do you do, can you not help yourself by adding more and more texture and layers no you, um, um i'm trying to get the best out of paint so my job is to celebrate and to bring out each color it's at, at absolute point of saturation and beauty before it loses it so it, you, you you can bring it to a certain peak of resonance where it's beginning to vibrate and actually jump off the canvas. And it, you, if you can destroy it, like, like that, you reach that point, you know, that's it. That's, that's the bit where you stop and you pull back and trying to keep that little song going. is quite hard when you've got a large canvas because you can kill it with, with too strong a, a action going on in another part of the painting. So, it really is um, when you when you finally get to that point where it's all sort of just balancing there and 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 all singing it with each other and 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 you've got nothing popping out in a bad way, then you go oh now go step back mm -hmm. and it's very much like that and a lot of it is literally taking out great chunks of painting that you may put into to begin with, but the, the rest of the painting has destroyed that one area of, of, of um, harmony and you have to just take the whole thing out and balance it with the other part of the painting. And some some uh, some of your paintings look like they have patterns almost, like stamps. Is that do you, is that what you do or are they yeah. all painting? Yes, I, yes. Okay. I'm, sort of, uh, I'm trying to get to some sort of truth, I suppose, in a way. I'm trying to I learn a, a visual language that that is my truth and when i can get something quickly then i feel that that's my duty to to do that so if i can represent a cup in its purest form so you, you recognize that shape well that's a cup 
um, then I feel I have to follow that through and, and keep that truth because um, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the pattern. The pattern. The pattern. The pattern. So <laughs> I, if I can get a stamp, if I can get a stamp from an Indian shop that just that does, does what I want it, it to do, it's flat, it's been created by something, it's been created by someone else to symbolize as an icon, it symbolizes something in its purest form. And why would I spend hours and hours recreating that? Why can't I just get a stamp and, go, bloop, bloop, and it's done? And it's what I wanted mm -hmm. to do in such a beautiful way. And I just love that repetition because I'm very interested in decoration and pattern and pattern making. I'm not a I'm not a, a designer, but I do love that world. I mean it, I just flit in and out of that decorative world. Um, I just, it really, really stimulates me in so many ways. So uh, yes, a little a little design stamp that's been hand carved mm. is, is just, um, yeah, I've, I use that a lot. It's like uh, a, a symbolizing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Poor Par wants to know, who is the girl in the paintings? Made up. So she, 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 I didn't know whether she was going to be redhead or, well, obviously she couldn't be red. Well, my base, the base colours to that is a sort of um, translucent red oxide. So she wasn't going to be a redhead because those are sort of yellow, they're more yellow bases to that painting. So I didn't know, she could have been very black. She could have had blackish, plumish hair, but she didn't. When I got to doing her hair, I had to balance out the rest of the painting and I had a lot of Naples yellow in that painting um, as a sort of blonde tones. And so she became, she was blonde because it it felt right, the balance was right. You know, it's not what I want, it's what the paint, that's why I said, you know, the painting controls me, yeah. those details. I really do not know what, going to happen a lot of the time I, of course I've the composition is usually set in stone actually it, it's interesting how composition um is is something that probably doesn't change I design that I work on a full scale um a full scale paper um paper drawing of, of wow. what the composition is going to be like and it's absolutely has to be sort of set in stone because those sort of composition compositional devices lead the eye from corner to corner they're devices that that you can't really play around with too much but the rest yeah. of it the color the color the the details of the faces the color of the hair i don't know that so she was she was going to be i just had this idea of a, a pool, a green pool in a, in a forest, in a sort of safe, enclosed little wood, woodland setting. And she was going to either be looking into a green pool or a, dipping her hands into a green pool. And the pool ended up sort of a movie colour. So. <laughs> I know it's, I know you, you, you put so much thought yeah. into the layout and the composition. Um, so yeah. does it annoy you if somebody asks you to take the could you take that cat out? Or could you take the dog out? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would. I mean, I, I, I love it when people talk about my work because you know I can talk about my work forever. But um, I, it's interesting. It says more about them. But it does. But I can't. I have to paint. My whole. The whole reason why I'm doing this is to express. Try and express what's in my head as a human. Trying. Trying to give back what it's like to be alive through the painting process, just to slow the passage of time down and to try and express what it's like to be a human being in a very intimate way. And so I'm trying to find, find the paint does that for me. So when someone says, would you take the cat out? Then I, I just would go, well, I just don't understand that. Yeah. No, does, no. It does, does, those words don't mean anything to me because it's no. not, I'm not painting not for, that, yeah. I'm painting for an art market, I'm painting for myself um, primarily 
then when I've painted it, then that communicates what it's like to be alive. And of course, everyone can understand that because they're all, mm -hmm. we're all human beings, we're all the same. We all have this, we all live in the same world, really. We're all very connected. That's so true. And, and just over the years, I know that you're so passionate about that. And, and I, I remember once you told me you woke up in the middle of the night and you had this dream, but you had to sketch it out. And that was related to one painting. And to me, that just says everything about you eat, breathe, live for paint. And that's what that's what it's, each it's, I'm so boring. I am really boring. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I go to an antique shop, I'm not really looking at a bar. <laughs> For, for my house, I'm looking for painting. So I go, I don't really like it, but I'm going to buy it because I know it will make a really <laughs> great paint. Um, <laughs> and that's me all over. Uh, Audrey wants to know about your silk scarves. Are you doing them again? <laughs> that was a collaboration with Becky. She she went to art college and, and fashion. And she was, um, when she came out of college, she was one of her ideas that she wanted to do. So I sort of collaborated with her for a bit and um, it, it, it sort of, it was as much, it was as, it went as far as Becky was interested in it. Um, and then it sort of, it, you know, I, I would need to collaborate. I couldn't do something like that myself um, because I'm not, a, I'm not a designer. I'm not, uh, it's not my, it wouldn't be my strength. Um, it was lovely to see the work in, in the in the silk scarf format, I thought it was very interesting, and and she she was um, she, it was interesting to get into her, her, her designer brain in that way, but um, no, it, it hasn't. I can't I can't see unless I collaborated with someone. I can't see. Um, um, and anybody. last question: What brand of paints produce the most vibrant colours? Um, well, the, the the I do use a lot of Michael Harding um, paints, and he mixes. He mixes his. I think he he's got. He's about as near as you can get to handmade paint. Well, I'm, I'm sure that's not true. That's, that's amazing paint out there, as well as Michael Harding, who produces amazing paints. But um, they're quite expensive, and um, I do I do use his whenever I can. And you use a lot, <laughs> a lot I of the paint. Lot, I use a lot of paint. So the um, the painting in the background, the, the Viridian interior, that would have taken a whole 200 milli, milliliter wow. um, tube of Viridian green paint, just one, just that's one color. I mean, obviously you used a lot of the other colors and that was very expensive. <laughs> so yeah. so it, that, I yeah. do. Yeah. Use and so what, uh, um, sorry, I keep saying last question, but this, I, I <laughs> Which is your favourite painting from this latest collection? Do you have one? Or... Um, I suppose the one behind me, it, I, I, I love because it gave me, it helped me through the anxious first few weeks of lockdown where we were all very, I was very nervous and worried. It was just so surreal. So in a way, I was very connected. It helped me. So I, I'm sort of, at this moment in time, yeah, there's a, there's a few of them. Those now, I suppose that they're all they're all significant. Um, I don't have any favourites really. No. They all mean different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, is, the painting behind you that was um, that's Becky when she when I went up to stay with her when she when she had the baby and, and just a few days afterwards. I came, in, I came, it was during the day and I came into the, her bedroom to see if she wanted a cup of tea. And she was um, lying across the bed. She'd obviously fallen asleep with her hand over, just on the side of the little cot that was next to the little crib next to the bed. And she was in a sort of protective mode and she was fast asleep and the baby was fast asleep and it was just, Lovely. Such yeah. a beautiful moment in, in yeah. such a, a I knew that was going to be very significant to me. I knew yeah. I was going to do a painting from that. Yeah, you captured that moment, definitely. Wow. It was, it was nice to wrap lots of paint around that concept, which is... Mm. 
Lucy, I can't tell you how, how grateful I am. This was wonderful, such a to get an insight into your your life mm -hmm. and this body of work. It's just superb. Um and hopefully we have another 20 years <laughs> together because it's just been so good. It's it's the journey Aww. has been lovely. Uh, nice. so thank you so much for joining. Well it's such tonight. a good idea, it's such a good idea um doing this online exhibition it's felt like a show really an opening yeah. of a show and all the excitement of it so well done for Lovely. coming thank, you. thank you for everyone who, who joined in tonight and asked lucy questions and yeah, uh, yeah thank you lucy <laughs> thank you everybody. take care bye, bye, -bye.